Live from Denver, Colorado, it's theCUBE. Covering Commvault Go 2019. Brought to you by Commvault. Hey, good morning. Welcome to theCUBE's coverage of Commvault Go 19. I'm Lisa Martin and I'm with Stu Miniman. Hey, Stu. Hey Lisa, are you ready for I day two? I was going to ask you, yes, are you ready? I, I, I believe the statement this morning was, we're born ready for this. We so. are born ready. Yes, that was a big theme this morning. It's the theme of the event here at Commvault Go 19 in Colorado, and great uh, parody this morning of all these old video clips of all these actors, including the Lego movie stars, from saying, I'm ready, even SpongeBob. That one got me. So uh, we had a great day yesterday, Stu. Lots of news came out Monday and Tuesday, so lots of great stuff to talk about. We had uh, there, a lot of their C-level execs, a lot of new changes at Commvault. Yesterday really got the vibe of hey, this is a new Commvault. Yeah, and it's interesting, Lisa, because one of the things we've been talking about is the 20 years of pedigree uh, that the company has, as Sanjay Merchandani said, yet they're doing some new items. Uh, I was talking to some of the partners and they're like, how come Metallic's like a separate brand? Don't you worry about brand spread? We know a thing about having too many brands uh, on the program. Um, so it is the, the history, the experience, the lessons learned, the war chest, uh, as they said, of all of the things that have gone wrong over the years, and I sure know that from my time living on the vendor side, is you know, there's no compression algorithm for all the experience you've had, and like, oh, we fix something and that stays in the code as opposed to something brand new might need to you know, work through things over time. Um, but Metallic, a separate brand, but leveraging uh, the partnerships and the go-to-market and the experience uh, of, of, of Commvault overall. So um, if you want, uh, you know, my, my, my quick take is you know, Metallic, uh, I, it definitely I think coming out of here is the thing we will be talking the most about. Their SaaS Plus model, um, I want to see how that plays in the marketplace. Uh, as uh, I uh, probed Rob when we interviewed him, customers, when you think about SaaS, it should just be, I worry about my data and I get up and running. And they said, they have a very fast up and running, less than 15 minutes, that's great. But some of that optionality that they built in, oh well I can bring this along or I can add this and do this, I, it's always worried that, oh wait, do I have to remember my thing and as it changes down the road, do I have everything set up right? Uh, those are some of the things that we're trying to get away from when we go to a SaaS or cloud model. And to your point, Another theme of the show has been about operational simplification. Not just what Commvault is doing internally to simplify their operations, but what they need to deliver to customers. Customers want simplicity, right? So we, we talk about that at every show, regardless of industry, but there is this, this line, and maybe it's blurring, like we talked a lot about blurred lines yesterday, of too much choice, versus simplification, where's the line there? Yeah, and, and a great point, Lisa. So uh, one of the items Sanjay Merchandani said yesterday in his keynote was that blurring line between primary and secondary storage, and I probed him on our interview. You know, is Commvault going into the primary storage market uh, with Hedvig? Hedvig's got a, you know, a nice offering, strong IP, good engineering team. I think they want to make sure that customers that have bought Hedvig or want to keep buying Hedvig will do it, but it really, uh, you know, I think two years from now when you look back, it is that core IP, how does that get baked into the solution, that's why they bought it, that's where it's going to be there. Uh, you know, I, I don't think we're going to be looking two years from now and saying, oh wow, you know, Commvault, they're going up against all the storage star waltz and competing a bit against HCI and everything, they have a strong partnership. So uh, I think I got clarity on that for the most part, even though the messaging will, will move over time on that. It will move over time on that, that's a good point. The, the song Blurred Lines kept popping into my head yesterday as we were talking about that. But one of the things that was clear was when we spoke with uh, Rab Kalustian about Metallic, we spoke with Avinash Lakshman about Hedvig Sanjay as well as Don Foster. They're already working on the technical integration of, of the solutions and we even spoke with their VP of pricing. So from a customer, from a, a current Hedvig customer perspective, there is focus on that from Commvault's perspective. It's not just about integrating the technologies, and obviously that has to be done really well, but it's also about giving customers the consistency and really 
for Commvault, kind of a new era of transparency with respect to pricing. Yeah, and, and another thing, we, we talked about uh, some of that transformation of the channel, and uh, uh, Mercer Rowe uh, came on board only a, you know, a couple of days officially uh, on the job. Uh, he's helped a number of companies get ready for multi-cloud, uh, and absolutely, we've, we've seen that change in the channel over the last five to 10 years. It, it, uh, you know, back in his days when he was at VMworld, uh, at VMware, uh, there, the channel was, oh my gosh, you know, when Amazon wins, we all lose. And today, we understand it is much more nuanced there. Uh, the channel that is successful, partners with the, the hyperscale cloud environments, they have practices built around it. Uh, the Office 365 and Microsoft practices are uh, a, a, an area that Commvault and their partners should be able to do well with and that Metallic will tie into, uh, as well as, you know, of course, AWS, uh, you know, the, the 800 pound gorilla in the space uh, will be there, uh, Commvault plays into that, uh, and you know, setting the channel up for that next generation with SaaS, uh, with the software, and living in a, in a broader multi-cloud environment is, uh, is, is definitely something to watch. Yeah, a lot of news about the channel, not just from a leadership standpoint, but also, so Metallic for the mid-market really delivered exclusively through the channel, but also the new initiative that they have, we talked a little bit about this yesterday, about going after and really a big focus with global systems integrators on the largest global enterprises. And when we spoke with their GTM chief of staff yesterday, along with Mercer, with Carmen, what they're doing, because I said, you know, channel partners, all the channel partners that they work with, work with their competitors, so you have to really deliver differentiation, and it can't just be about pricing or marketing messaging. It goes all the way into getting those feet on the street. And that's another area in which we heard yesterday, Commvault making strategic improvements on more feet on the street, co-selling with partners, really pulling them deeper into enablement and trainings. And to them, that is one of the key differentiators that they are delivering to their partners. Yeah, and uh, Lisa, we got to speak to a, number, a couple of customers. We have more coming on today. Uh, it's a little bit telling that you know, the average customer you talk to, they have you know, five, 10 years of experience there, uh, they are excited about some of the new offerings, but as we've said many times, uh, you know, Metallic, the new Hedvig, we want to talk to the new logos that they're going to get on board. That is something that for the, the partners has been an incentive. There were new incentives in, uh, put in place to help capture those new logos, because as we know, revenue was actually down the last fiscal year a bit, uh, and uh, Commvault feels that they have turned the corner, uh, they're all ready uh, to go. And one other note I, I'd like to make, the analogy I used last year is we knew a CEO was, a new CEO search was happening, uh, a lot of things were, were in motion, and it's almost as if uh, you were getting the body ready for an organ transplant, and you make sure uh, that the antibodies aren't going to reject it. And in conversation with Sanjay, he was very cognizant of that, uh, you know, his background is DevOps, and uh, he was a CIO he was, uh, for, for uh, IT, he was the CEO of Puppet, so he's going to make things move even faster, and the pace of change over the last nine months is just the beginning of the change. And for the most part, I'm not hearing grumbling underneath, the customers seem fully on board, the employees are energized, and definitely uh, there was good energy last year, but a, a raise of uh, the, the enthusiasm this year. Well, Stu, first of all, you have just been on fire the last two days. Comparing their CEO transition to getting a body ready for a transplant is probably one of the best things I've heard in a long time. That was awesome. But you're right, we've heard a lot of positivity. Cultural change is incredibly difficult. You talked a minute ago about this is a 20-year-old company, and as we all you know, have all experience in, in the industries in which we're in, you know, one of the things that's important is, is messaging that experience and talking about the things that, that worked well, but also the things that didn't work well, that they've learned from. That message was carried through during the keynote this morning. Um, the three customers on stage that we saw before we had to come to the set. And I, I, my favorite was from Sonic Healthcare, uh, Matthew McAbee, who's coming on in shortly with us. And I always appreciate, you know, I think the voice of the customer is, the best brand validation that you can get. However, what's even better is a customer talking about when the technologies that they're using fail, because it does happen. How are they positioned with the support and the training and the education that Commvault is giving them to make those uh, repairs quickly to ensure business continuity and ensure disaster recovery? I think that, to me, 
that speaks volumes about the legacy, the 20 years of experience that Commvault has. Yeah, no, Lisa, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, there's certain products out there that we talk about, you know, uptime and 100%. In this space, you know, I, I believe the stat was about 94% you know, success rate. And uh, we had NASA uh, in the keynote yesterday talking about you know, success versus partial success versus failures. And Commvault uh, really embraces that and has customers that will talk about that because uh, there are times that things will happen and there are things that you need to be able to recover from. With ransomware, often it is not a question of if, but when uh, it is going to be happened. Lisa, the other thing I want to get your comment on, uh, Jimmy Chin, uh, who is the uh, uh, director and one of the, the, the cameramen of the free solo, Oscar winning uh, free solo documentary. Uh, definitely gave me a little bit of, uh, oh my gosh, look at some of the heights and I was nervous uh, just looking at some of the stuff they're doing. Uh, I like a little bit of lightweight hiking. Uh, I'm not a mountain climber or anything Agreed. like that. Uh, <laughs> but he talked about when the camera goes on, there's that added pressure uh, and that goes on and is sitting there, it's like, yeah, you know, we sit here live all day uh, doing that. There's that, uh, that energy to perform but uh, you know, we all appreciate the, the, the everybody watching and understanding that we're all human here, and every time, uh, every once in a while, a word or a mistake gets in there, but uh, we, we keep going. First Reach of all, summit. yeah, that's life, but also Jimmy Chin, phenomenal. Uh, I think 2018, they, they just won the Oscar just earlier this year for Free Solo. I have to watch that this weekend. But a couple of things that he talked about is that uh, failure is a huge part of preparation. Couldn't agree more. What a simplified statement for somebody that not only has has skied Everest, uh, the uh, climbed Meru. I think they call it the shark fin of of India. Um, but what you talked about with what he documented with Free Solo and all of the thousands of sequences that he talked about that Alex, I'm forgetting his last name, the the, the guy who who Free Soloed um, El Capitan all of these different failure scenarios that he rehearsed over and over again. In case he encountered any of them, he would immediately be able to remedy that situation and get himself back on track. I thought that message, to me, failure is, is a good F word if you use it properly. You know, NASA, you mentioned yesterday, and NASA was famous for coining in the 60s, failure is not an option. And I always say onto that because I used to work for NASA, but it's a distinct possibility. And so what Jimmy Chin shared this morning was electrifying, but it also was a great uh, understatement of what Commvault is helping their customers do. You, we have to help you prepare for this. Yeah. We can't help you prepare for all of it. As you mentioned, it's ransomware, it's not if, but when. Well, right, and, and uh, both NASA and when the climbing is understanding where something could go wrong and therefore what the failure scenarios are. Uh, so, you know, rockets today, you can't have a failure. And by failure they mean, look, if the rocket isn't going to work or something goes wrong, we need to make sure we don't have loss of life. Uh, you know, that is something that if you look at Blue Origin uh, and SpaceX, that is you know, preeminent in there is we can't have an, another Challenger uh, disaster. We can't have some of these environments where, where we have the loss of human life. So that is number one. Some of the other ones, sometimes we, we know that the unknown happens or things don't go quite right. Uh, so being prepared to understand if something goes wrong, how do we recover? Cover from that, and that brings us back to the whole data protection and recovery of the environment because the best laid architecture, uh, eventually something will happen and therefore we need to make sure that that data, the lifeblood of the company, uh, is able to be recovered and used and that the business can go forward uh, even if some piece of infrastructure or, or some attack uh, got through. There, and there's inherent risk in every industry, whether you're talking about healthcare data, we talked with AstraZeneca yesterday, you know, genetics, clinical data, or you're talking about a retailer, doesn't matter, there's inherent risk with every business. And one of the most important things that I got out of the NASA talk yesterday, Jimmy Chin's talk today, some of the customers, is that preparation is, you can't be over-prepared, you really can't. In fact, he said that, you can't be over-prepared in his line of work, but I think it applies to the inherent risk that any business has managing data. As we talk about, it's all the time, it's the lifeblood, it's the new oil. It is, it has to be available, accessible 24 by seven. If it isn't and can't be, businesses are at massive risk of, in this day and age, competitive competitors 
who have, a, you know, maybe a better risk fault tolerance scenario in play. So that risk that, that they have to mitigate comes to preparation. We're going to be talking with Sandra Hamilton in just a few minutes about who leads customer success for Commvault really want to dig into the training, the support. We've heard that articulated from customers on stage that I, I don't wake up in the middle of the night anymore because I have the support from my trusted vendor, Combo, and that is critical to any business staying up. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to hear from a number of customers. I'm sure they're ready and uh, we are ready for day two. We are ready, Stu. Let's have a great day, yeah? Thanks. All right, so Stu and I will be right back with our first guest on day two of our coverage of Commvault Go. For Stu, I'm Lisa Martin. We'll be right back. <laughs>